Welcome to Windows on the World. Recently we've been talking about our loss of sovereignty to outside bodies such as CETA and TTIP, these things that are coming in that not many, not many people have actually heard of. Uh, they've been in the news slightly, but we are really having our sovereignty and indeed our rights taken away. I'm going to be talking today to uh, Robert Barwick, who's the National Media Spokesman and the Executive Member for the Citizens Electoral Council of Australia. Welcome, Robert. Thanks, Mark. We've dropped in today. It's very interesting what we've been talking about so far because we've been covering things like CETA and TTIP and you brought it into a wider picture. But first, could you just give us a bit of your background because it's very interesting. Well, we're an Australian political party, Citizens Electoral Council, and we were formed 28 years ago by ordinary people who saw the economic destruction of Australia. And the cause was, you know, broadly globalisation, right? So neoliberalism, you know, Thatcherism, if you will, what, what our government started copying what Thatcher was doing here. Um, and uh, you had the think tanks based in London, like the Institute of Economic Affairs, yes. that were very strong um, uh, backers of Thatcher, were helping write the policies that were being implemented in Australia. So, and consequently, Australia's productive economy started being destroyed, and um, both major parties were had signed onto it. So some in the state of Queensland, some local people said, we're gonna start our own political party and start fighting back against this. And that's the origins of the Citizens Electoral Council. So 28 years later, we're the, we're, we would be the strongest independent party in the country. Um, and what we're fighting for is, you know, the national interest um, that is based on what is the common good of the Australian people. And at the core of that is sovereignty. Right? We, we need to be a sovereign nation that can make our own decisions for what's in the best interests of the Australian people. And we don't have that. We don't have that, you know, under globalisation, no country has economic sovereignty. Um, under uh, 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 the way Australia is, you know, we, we even have, uh, you know, your queen is our queen. We don't even have any real political sovereignty in that respect. Um, and in strategic matters, you know, the United Kingdom and the United States basically define Australian policy. So we've got very little sovereignty. Um, and, you know, that is, a, that is therefore a, an important foundation principle to fight for. You've got to have that, right? And, and as part of that, uh, we've done a lot of work to sort of define what real sovereignty is. And even if you get to raise your own flag and elect your own members of parliament, it really does come down to the, the economic question, right? Because when you've got politicians and, and an elected parliament that say we can't do certain things because we have these uh, you know, international financial forces that would be upset, that, that um, uh, have more authority than we do, right? then you don't have sovereignty, right. it's, it's, um, pure and simple. So where we've sort of um, uh, uh, happily stumbled on each other today is we have our own version of TTIP which is called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yes. So what you, what, what's happened is the United States, but not really the United States, Wall Street, and in our experience, when you, when you hear Wall Street, you've actually, and it's important for British people to know, to understand, never think of Wall Street as, a, as Wall Street. It's, Wall, it's always Wall Street and the City of London. They, they're, they, they're in tandem. And in fact, uh, Mark, in many respects, Wall Street is the junior to the city of London. There is more, uh, the, the reason a lot of American banks came here after Thatcher's reforms, especially in 1986 and the Big Bang, is because they were allowed to do here what they weren't even allowed to do in the United States. Right? That's absolutely correct. And um, the, we've discussed this on the show before that um, but basically the whole, the USA, the United States of America, are actually a plantation of the city of London. It's run from the city of London. Effectively, yeah. right, effectively. Yeah. Now, it wasn't always that way. This is, the, it's, it's become that, especially post-war, post the death of Roosevelt, one of the, I mean, just as an aside before we get onto the TPP, but one of the reasons we come to the UK is we're, we're campaigning for this policy called Glass-Steagall. And that Glass-Steagall is the names of a couple of politicians in the United States who put their names to a bill in 1933, which is the response to the Great Depression, yep. and President Roosevelt passed it. And it was the probably the single greatest financial reform in history. It said, okay, from now on, um, 
investment banks where the big guys play and gamble cannot have anything to do with commercial banks that provide a service to the public, right? Yeah. The two should never meet. And it was strict, like no cross directorships, no contact, no nothing. And that was in place for 66 years. And while that was in place, you didn't have systemic banking crisis. You'd have, you know, you could have a, a, something here or there, but nothing ever melted down the system. When they scrapped that, it melted down the system. And we've got to get it back. And the biggest, everyone agrees with it, makes perfect sense. But the biggest opposition to it is London and Wall Street, the banks, and they own the political structures of the UK and the United States, right? And that's really entrenched now. So you're right, it's that colonial plantation idea. So what's happened is um, the, the, the system that they created, that London and Wall Street created, especially in the last 40 years of deregulation, has bankrupted the transatlantic economic sector. It's bankrupted it. And we used to, you know, you know what the United Kingdom was like. Australia was similar. Productive economies, right? A lot more manufacturing where real wealth is and, and a lot more agriculture, right? Um, that's all almost disappeared or, or declined dramatically. While that's declined, you know, if in 1975, the city was 100% of UK GDP. Now it's 450% of UK GDP, right? It's just ballooned into this great big parasite sucking up all the wealth out of the United Kingdom. So when you have a parasitical system, it's always going to collapse. So the transatlantic economies have collapsed. That's what blew up in 2008, really. It wasn't just the, the finances. The finances reflected the underlying bankruptcy. Um, the other part of the world, the eastern countries, they actually haven't done that, right? They have transformed themselves with the th kind of things that western countries used to do. Big investment, real investment into real things, infrastructure especially. China's raised its living standard. So we see a war danger that's coming because the City of London and Wall Street controlling the US and UK governments are antagonistic at the rise of China, right? And, and um, they, that antagonism spills over into Russia because Russia and China and India and Brazil and South Africa formed this bloc called the BRICS, yep. which is rising in strength while the transatlantic economies are collapsing, right? Um, American foreign policy, as defined by Dick Cheney in the 90s, says we, the United States, will base our foreign policy on making sure that we will not allow the rise of a rival military power or economic power. That's the basis of, of their foreign policy. So there's been, in our part of the world, a lot of American belligerence against China, and as you and I were talking about, all you hear is the, is the is how bad China is. And now the Queen's told you too, right? She's, she's, she's proven it. China's well, she bad. she told you too, as well, apparently, been, allegedly. That's right. They're, they're rude. Um, so that's all you hear, how bad China is. Well, whatever's happening in the South China Sea, go look at it on the map. It's yeah. called the South China Sea because it's right at China. Yeah. America's, America is 10,000 miles away, right? The United Kingdom is, is way over here. Um, Australia's there. And it's in it. our economy depends on China. It's in our interest to trade with China. Now, it shouldn't have been so dependent, but that's what we made it. But our government, under American and British sponsorship, is participating in this um, antagonism that's about to start a war with China. So there's got this military tensions that are rising, and we've become a sort of a, a, a military base for the United States as part of those tensions. But then Obama goes and says, well, we're going to have these trade deals. Trans-Pacific Partnership in our part of the world, TTIP here. They, un they um, put them out at the same time, exactly the same modus operandi. The secrecy you talked about with TTIP, exactly the same, right? Nobody has seen any copies of these documents, any, any of these negotiations, etc. Yeah, so Trans-Pacific Partnership, again, same as TTIP, um, is supposed to be this great, wonderful trade deal, free trade zone, etc. Um, of course, I probably don't have to go into too much, but it's a, it's a bill of rights for co multinational corporations is what it actually is, right? Um, but the, what proves, though, it's not about trade, it's not about economic cooperation, is the fact that in our part of the world, this, this Pacific one, China, which is in the Pacific, right, is excluded from it. And it's, and it's not just like um, the Marshall Islands or something, it's China. It's the biggest economy in the world. Now, um, the, there's, a, there's a second part of the proof that how this uh, trade deal is therefore 
not about trade, it's about Anglo-American strategic dominance, right, and economic dominance. Then the proof of that is China has its own offer on the table. Now, the, China's offer is called the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, uh, and it's part of what people may have heard about, where China has embarked on the biggest infrastructure program in the world that it is uh, inviting the world to participate in called the New Silk Road, One Belt, One Road vision. And it's the idea of the old trading route from Asia to Europe transforming into prop, with proper infrastructure, right? So get this, the world can trade better together, but without... But not, in a, but not necessarily f- more free trade where you drop all your barriers, yeah. right? Just make the trade you do more efficient, better transportation, better shipping, do those mm-hmm. things so you can trade from a mutually beneficial standpoint. It'll take a lot of investment, but that's, but investment in this infrastructure is good because it raises living standards. That's China's mm-hmm. policy. It's spearheading this. Um, and it announced uh, a couple of years ago this Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank idea that it's going to set up this, ins- this bank as, a, as a, a club of governments to band together and fund this infrastructure. And it said, everyone's welcome to join, including the United States. So now for Australia, this is a no brainer. Here we have, thanks to the neoliberal reforms we took, we smashed our, our manufacturing economy and just became resources. And when we did that, we became a big quarry. We became dependent on one country, China. So we need it, right? Um, we should change it, you know, like the, the manufacturing stuff, but while we, while we need China, we certainly shouldn't go to war with China, and uh, here's the making this offer, which is gonna benefit everybody, we should join it. Australia refused to join it, and what we did was, um, we refused to join it because America said to us, you shouldn't join it. So not only did America decline, they told us we shouldn't join it, and at the last minute, we ended up joining it because the United Kingdom jumped in and joined this bank in our part of the world, right? So it really um, enraged the United States. We're reluctant members of it. Here's, so here's America saying China can't be part of the TPP. Here's China saying America can be part of this Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. America won't and um, uh, instead is pushing ahead with this thing that's just going to give, like I said, a, a bill of rights for multinational corporations. You've just de- deconstructed globalism there. The, the, what, the, the, the crap that we're, we're told about globalisation is basically a control system and it's nothing to do with trade or economics. No, no, no. Exactly. And, and you've nailed that brilliantly. So where can people um, get in touch with you? Look, our web, we, we maintain a good website. You can look us up by our name on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, um, Citizens Electoral Council or CEC Australia. If you just put it in that, you'll, you'll get it. You can look that up on the website as well. Uh, CEC Australia will find us. The website's updated regularly. The YouTube channel, we have a TV show like this in Australia once a week, and we report on these issues from there. And if you're really, really keen, you can even, we have a weekly publication called the Australian Alert Service. People from the UK can subscribe to, we'll send it electronically. Well, it's great that we keep in touch because we all need to work together on this and not in the way that they think. That's, <laughs> that's it from Windows on the World for this section. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks to Windows on the World. Keep watching those, watching us, watching Windows on the World, and we'll see you soon.